concept. Got to do everything, all the gizmos and all the gadgets. Uh, Everybody have a wonderful Shavuos. Where were you, Shavuos? Were you at, you wouldn't didn't come to Hamish? No, I don't remember what happened. Okay. We were here. You were yeah. here? Yeah. Did an all night kind of thing? No, they it stopped at eleven. Okay. They didn't yeah. start there until eleven thirty, I think, at Hamish. They had about a half a dozen speakers. That was interesting. Okay. And then she said she's never gone to shul again. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be back. Okay, this, the first part of chapter 11 is very complicated, so that's why we're not going to do it. We're going to go to page 144. Just like everything else we have done. This, because, you know, I'm sorry, it's very sticky mud, and I don't even think I could navigate what through it. You are? And, hold, and hold cup. What we're on page 144, the division of souls into roots and sparks. He did say something earlier on that I did want to bring down a number that was a really interesting number. Okay. If you go to it, the, the bottom line, there's a maximum of 613 times 600,000 minor sparks in each and every part suf. This number, by the way, is 300. Got to get this number down. It's on page 136. Just a little prelude. 367.8 million. 367.8 million. That's an important number. We'll get it. You can write it down. Because let's 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 just look at the text and then and then we'll try to put it together. I'm sorry I don't have any other copies for you. And where's your copy? What is this? Mm, okay, it's all good. I went to torch. All right, here we go. So this section it will describe the divisions of souls into roots and sparks, and the minimum and maximum number of roots and sparks that must go through reincarnation, we call it Gilgul, to achieve Tikkun. Okay? Because we're all here about what we call Tikkun. Right? Everything's about Tikkun. The world to come. Tikkun means repair, it means fixing. Once Rabbi Nachman, he was sitting there with his students, and he overheard one guy who was davening Mariv. I guess he was davening the evening prayer on his own. And in the middle of the evening prayer, there's a certain prayer just before you go into the silent prayer. In that prayer, the Hebrew word is the Sakneinu Be'etza Tova Melifanecha, which translates to, and fix us, the Sakneinu, give us a tikkun, Be'etza Tova, with your good counsel, good advice, you're praying to Hashem, fix me, Be'etza Tova Melifanecha, with the good advice that you give me. Okay? And, he, and Rabbi Nachman says, you have no idea the depth of that prayer. People just say it, you know, too much by rote, and they just skip through it because there's just too much humming through, and they don't really stop and really Take deeply think about that particular prayer. The Sakaneno, a tikkun. We really just want a tikkun. We need a tikkun. And God is, thank God, Baruch Hashem, thank God he's working on all of us to get a tikkun. Tikkun is rectification. We need to fix when I was young and in yeshiva, right? When I first got to yeshiva, so I was on a Rebbe hunt. What does that mean? I would go to every single Makubal, every Kabbalist that I knew about, wherever they were, for a tikkun, for a rectification, right? So I went, I searched all, I went to so many. I mean, you go to, I mean, to some real wild places, and they did some really wild stuff, okay? They didn't slaughter a chicken in front of me and wave it over my head, okay, none of that. But it got pretty wild, okay? <laughs> right? One guy, you know, you just open up a book, and he started, like, and, and it was like a kind of like weird, weird book, and he would just, like, read your life. Yeah. You know? Huh. So, his name was Abu Daud. Mm -hmm. Abu Daud, like David, Father David, translates. In any case, I don't even know if he was Jewish. Anyway, I think like he was. I think he was. Abu. But well, because he came from Iraq. Oh, Iraq. Uh, his father. You know, yeah, whatever, whatever. So did you go to Iraq? Anyways, anyways, I was looking for a tikkun. I would go to these rabbis. I was going for again. Yeah, what's my tikkun? Like, do your heebie-jeebie. Fix me, <laughs> right? Because I need fixing. Well, y'all need fixing. Okay. Did they fix you? 
They definitely worked on me. They tried. Oh man! <laughs> Thank God. No, you never know. You just don't know. Everyone's everything's a little chip and a chip and a chip, right. Right. and God is building us and building us and building us to where we become that vessel. So it's like a chip here, a bang here, a smack here, a nudge here, right? A pull here, a pinch here, right? Here we go. All these levels of soul that were mentioned in the previous section, and there are many levels of soul that we discuss, okay? So we, we talk about levels of soul, and we've discussed this before. That really, in general, there are five levels of soul of a Jew, okay? Seven? No, five. We have five, but really the five really bleed into 25. And those 25 go into 125. Okay? Because how does it break down? There's the lowest is called a nefesh that's anchored through the liver and the blood. Mm -hmm. There's the ruach. That is anchored through the heart and the emotions. And then there is the neshama. The neshama is anchored through the mind, okay, the brain, okay? Really, the leshem holds not really. The, the neshama is too high, really. It's the neshama of the ruach. Well, I'll get that in a second. Nefesh, ruach, neshama. And then you have two higher ones, peripheral, we say. Chaya, called life. And yechida which is called kind of like singular, or what we call it now, the new translation is unique. Your unique relationship with, your God, with God and your unique mission. Your, what is it called again? Right, your nigun. Your, your nigun, right? Your special melody, okay? So you have all five of these, but each one, the nefesh itself has five in it. Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, Chaya, Yechida. And the Ruach has Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, Chaya, Yechida. And the Neshama has one, two, three, four, five. And this has five, and this has five. And then each one of those has another five, so therefore it comes out to be 125. <sighs> Let's just take it simple. All of these souls that were mentioned, that were mentioned in the previous section, were included within Adam Arishon. Once again, we're going to go back to the primordial. Uh, primordial time before time in the universe existed where God willed to bestow pleasure and instantly had to be created something that was going to receive that pleasure and we'll call that the universal soul of Adam HaRishon the first man so within Adam HaRishon's soul has all of these different levels okay all of them are included in the one soul the Sulam does say this the Sulam, who's Rabbi Yehuda Leib Ashlag, he was a uh, 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 who uh, translated the Zohar. He says, really, when it comes down to it, there's only really one soul. And what separates those? Just the bodies. The bodies is the only thing. If you can only get into that and try to integrate that throughout your lifetime, okay? That behind everything, when you carve it down to its most innermost thing, there's only one soul. That's the soul of Adam Rishon. But now let's go break it down into the parts. Adam was composed of 248 limbs and 365 sinews. Even in the aspect of souls and every particular that was mentioned was divided in this way. Okay? And we know that the 248 plus 365 equals 613, 613 yeah. and those are the 613 mitzvot. Okay? And since they are divided in Adam, Arishon has in general these 248 and 365 equals 613. Each one of the parts, just look at it as a universal soul in the figure of a man arms and legs and a torso, right? And each one of those, you're going to look at it now. We're going to kind of into like, it's a, 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 if you ever look at a hologram in those days, they don't have them anymore. I don't see them anymore. They were unique in my days. Mm -hmm. You know, nowadays, I don't know where it's, it's digital or something. But it used to be a hologram was made up of pixels. Mm -hmm. We'll call it that, I guess. Dots, right? Mm -hmm. Like huge dots would make up the whole picture. And if you go into one picture, one of those dots, and you focus in on it, what happens? You see a picture of the whole thing. 
okay? You can walk all around it. Walk it's all around it. Else. Okay. There you go. 3D. It's a 3D. That's the unique thing, okay? So in each one of these dots is going to be every single one, okay? Each particular part suf, we have mentioned part suf before, okay? That was mentioned in the last, last section is a soul body of Adam Arishon. It has already been discussed in Gates of Reincarnation, Chapter 3, what we've learned that each part suf divides into 248 limbs and 365 sinews. Okay, I'm not going to get into the part suf until, unless we need to. Okay, the Yechida, now we're going to go into addresses. I had, did I, oh, I didn't bring the paper. No. Anybody got paper, notebook? Never mind, I got it here. A pen. Let's do this, okay? A lot of, of when we are um, going to study Kabbalah, and like I say, the main division that we study in Kabbalah is the theoretical. And the theoretical, the way it's understood as, it's a map. A map, okay? When you understand it's a map, and you mention these kind of terms like Yechida of Asilut, you're talking about an address in the spiritual realm, okay? So if I do this right now, okay, and I divide, let's say you'll have the world of making, the world of formation, the world of creation, and the world of, uh, we'll call it nearness, okay? We're going to look at this this way, that God, in order to make a creation, he had to filter his light, so to speak, in order that we should sit in the dark, okay? Because we need to sit in the dark, okay? Yeah. So in other words, going from the brightest light and filtering down, God had to filter his light down that we could have, have we can enjoy in existence. Okay? So, if we look at it and we divide the worlds into these four categories, okay? In each one of these, we're going to look at it as divided and has basically five, what we'll call a part suf or a set. If you want to know what a... a how do you understand a part suf? A part suf means a set, okay? So you'll have what I, um, here, or what I just described by a level of soul. So let's look at the level of soul where he's talking about now. We have nefesh, ruach, right? Nefesh, ruach, neshama, chaya, and yechida. So here, I just described here, there's five levels of soul. In each one of these, there's five levels of soul. Mm -hmm. Each one of these worlds, these dimensions, has five levels of soul. Okay? So now, what is, what, where is he talking about? It's not too complicated. Don't get freaked out. It's just a map. He's describing a place, a street. Okay? So he's talking about what we're going to call Yechida of Atzilut. Where's Yechida of Atzilut? Okay, no problem. It's way up here. It's the top top. The tippy top. Okay? We're going to tax the tippy tops. Okay? <laughs> so, the Yechida of Atzilut, of the highest of the highest form of existence that a person can be on, okay? This is where he is now. So you don't have to get bogged down by terminologies. Even though terminologies, eventually, the more you study this, the wisdom, the more it becomes familiar with her, and then it's easier to follow. So the Yechida of Atzilu divides into 613 limbs and sinews. Very good. Each limb or sinew is called a root. Similarly, each one of the aspects of Chaya, or Neshama, or Ruach, or Nefesh of Atzilu divides into 613 roots. So what is he describing here? Right here, this place, this level of soul has 613 roots. Number one, 613 roots. Two, 613, 613, 613. Okay? Each one has 613. What about all the other things? Each one of those, and it goes all the way on. I want, I'm not going to write it all out because then it would... Where are we on the page? We're not. Right here. Oh, here on the page, here. Page 144. Okay? 144? I'm on page 144. Oh. Similarly, 
Each one of the five parts of of Bria divide into 613 roots. And they are all called the Neshama of Bria in general. It is the same with each of the five parts of Yetzirah, each of the five parts of Asiya. The 613 roots of each part of are called major roots. Okay? In other words, just, just to get the, the, the how it works in terms of the division, each one of these has 613, and it goes each one of these and all the way down 613. Do your math now, okay? 613 times 5 times 613 times 5, and everything like that, and you go why, ahead why and get your calculator. Why do they have different names? So is this, this, is, ah. this, is, this is Berea. Okay, because this is the world of Berea, creation. Uh, okay, I didn't this know that. that. This is, sorry, I called it in Hebrew, and I called it in English for you. This is called Atzilut. This is called Berea. This is called Yetzirah. And this is called Asiya, making and we be on the bottom, bottom. Just want to know where, if you want to know where we are on the map, okay? Where are we? Okay? Um. But we all, listen up, listen to this, okay? When we learn this, David was mentioning this, it's very important. Every single thing that we're learning and we're studying here is a meditation, right now, okay? And when you're studying these things and these terms are being thrown at you, okay? They are, all of this is within us, okay? Right now. We exist on different planes of reality. We are not aware of it. You have a part of you which is a, in, in this dimension. There's a part of you that exists in other dimensions. We are just not aware of it because we are encased in a body, okay? Yeah. We look at the, at the body, which means, you know, happy Father's Day, okay? Yeah. And she's going to keep trying. Here she doesn't, you'll remember. She's in Israel. Um, she doesn't, it's okay. <laughs> no, it's... We won't come. I forgot where I was. Thank the shoe! She Everything, it's all about the shoe. <laughs> no. <laughs> the shoe fits where? Okay? You take it off and throw it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's no, a, like there's this, a huge like, dynamic about shoes in Torah. Oh. Okay? Big thing about shoes. Okay, in Torah, okay? When they sold Joseph for five shekels, mm -hmm. what did they do with those five shekels? There was a sale at Payless. We had to go. Okay, Payless going out of business. 40% off, you can't resist. No, it, they bought a pair of shoes. There was no Payless then, okay? Just work with me here, okay? <laughs> Gotta be careful what you say. <laughs> and who's here? This rabbi thinks that Payless existed in biblical times, right? They're going to come out with it now, okay? <laughs> they bought a pair of shoes. What's with that? Okay? Why? Of all things to buy, a pair of shoes, right? What's the significance, right? They didn't want to uh, walk barefoot on the sand. It was hot. They had <laughs> shoes. What, they walk, no, they're out no, there doing who knows what. Something Got, about You know, they, they, they don't have... No, the, it's not one of the brothers needed a pair of shoes. Maybe they were wearing them. Their father was actually, they were a very wealthy family, yeah. you know. Shoes represent a existence in this world, okay? They represent a kium, what we call a kium, or an establishment in this world. Also, shoes represent the future, because the shoes take you to the future. That brings down. They also we all we learned this a couple weeks ago. Did we meet last week? I don't remember. No, Shabbos. Yes. Um, we learned it two weeks ago about the whole idea that uh, there's a there's this uh, there's this um, ritual called chalitza. Uh. Mm -hmm. The chalitza is where if the uh, there's the mitzvah of yibum is if a brother dies right. without That's children. Sure. So it's a mitzvah for the surviving brother to marry the widow if there was no children, right? And have children through there. Right. Because the soul of the brother is hovering, attached to the lady there, yeah, we did to the woman, yeah. wanting to come back in to be reborn again and get his life together and achieve tikkun, rectification. He's stuck. He's almost like in a limbo, Okay waiting for the lady, for the brother to do yibam and have a child, and he goes in and he becomes that 
that, uh, that child. However, we, these days we don't do that. We do what's called chalitza, where the guy's got to put on this really funky kind of sandal kind of shoe, okay? And he's got to kind of lean against the wall on a board kind of thing, and he's got to have the shoe, and she's got to take off the shoe. The widow takes off the shoe, and then she spits, and then she says a statement, right? Everybody's into the spit, right? As a matter of fact, <laughs> there was one time where they told me they went to this chalitza, and all these rabbis got to see, is that a good spit? Was that enough? Is there a measurement of how much spit? Maybe you go, should she spit again? Because that, Yeah, it was a measure it. They look, yeah. <laughs> Hang on. No, I, yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and have the was that a spit? I didn't see the spit. Well, you know what? Uh, can we get an instant replay on that? And they're looking in there just to see. Oh. Okay. The one son, can he divorce her then? And he's, he's yes. Yeah, so, so, no, so, so once she does that, takes the shoe off, Yeah. that releases, and then she has to spit and make this declaration, right? right? And so then that releases that soul because that soul was attached the idea of a shoe, right, is the lower encasement of our souls. Mm -hmm. Just like our shoes encase the lowest part of our bodies, so our bodies are only encasing a garment of the lowest part of our souls. So that's why also Yom Kippur we take off our shoes. There's a lot of other implications. Why do we take off our shoes on Yom Kippur? Because it's really the idea of you're supposed to like work on shedding the body in order to experience the soul, okay, mm -hmm. in its entirety. There's a, a lot of other meanings behind it. That was something that, that I thought of, okay? So the idea really here is we have an existence that goes into many, many dimensions, mm -hmm. okay? Many, many levels, many, many dimensions. And each one, what he's specifically speaking about is the 613 major roots of each one of these. The question is where do we really tie into essentially? Because you really want to tie into your essential root. You really want to hook up to your essential root. Because when you hook up to your essential root, then you'll achieve the, the, the rectification, the tikkun. You, we're here to do a tikkun. Okay? And the thing is, we're in the dark. We don't know really what our tikkun is. <coughs> we have to keep praying with sakanenu. The eitzah tova. Fix us. Give me the tikkun. Give me the tikkun. Give me the tikkun. What am I supposed to be doing? Okay? And because most of the times, believe it or not, God is totally involved with us. Okay, we're totally involved in our tikkun. But we think our tikkun should be this, this, or this, and not this, which is what he's shoved us into. And therefore, we're frustrated because I thought my tikkun was for me to do this. But really, no, this is, this is your, what you're in right now is your tikkun. So you had to feel good with your tikkun, right? So, okay, so that's what Berea, Berea really represents, and on, on that paragraph, similarly, each one of the five parts Sufim of Berea divided into 613 roots, and they are called Nishama of Berea. So going back here, this is Berea, and in a general sense, this is Nishama. This is Yehida, this is Nishama, right? In a general sense. Sorry, this is Chaya and Yehida. This is Nishama, in a general sense, Okay keep losing the page, okay? So here, furthermore, it is possible that each one of these divisions divides into greater number of particulars as a result of the sin of Adam Marishon and other creatures. This is a strange one for me. Why is he mentioning other creatures here? Okay? Again, okay? Furthermore, it is possible that each one of these divisions divides into a greater number of particulars as a result of the sin of Adam, Marishon, and other creatures. In other words, it didn't need to be divided like this. And then it goes into subdivisions and subdivisions. But from what he's saying is the result of Adam, Marishon, and other creatures, i got to look up this one. Okay? What, does he say anything here? All of these major roots together fragment into as many as 600,000 minor roots, as we have already learned in Gates of Reincarnation 10, chapter 10, and which the Rav will explain momentarily. The result of Adam's sin was that it became more difficult for people to achieve tikkun. That's in bold here. It became more difficult because of it. Therefore, more Gilgulim became necessary in order to complete tikkun. Okay? It would have been simple had Adam or Isha not sinned. 
okay? He would have had children, right? And they would have lived forever and would have had a lot of children and the whole world would be populated and each one would have its own unique expression to express and it would have been easy to express. But that wouldn't have, that would have been that wouldn't have been fun. It's more fun to go through the entire uh, to be eaten by the serpent and go through the snake's belly for six thousand years, which is what we're doing. Okay, we're like being swallowed. We've all been swallowed by the snake, and all of our bodies are that snake skin that we're still going through the entire, you know, digestion track of the snake until we get, I guess, <laughs> the other end. Okay, therefore, more Gilgulim are necessary in order to complete. So you have to go through a lot of Tikkunim only as a result of Adam's sin. Okay, it's not easy to achieve an instant Tikkun. In order to clarify this subject, we will begin with the example of what we call the Nukva of Asiya. And you will be able to infer from there all others. Now, Nukva of Asiya, once again, don't get freaked out. Nukva literally means feminine. Asiya means making. Okay, so if you go on our map, if we go on Nukva of Asiya, we're going to talk about down here. Nukva means the feminine part of Asiya. We'll look at that, the Malchut of making way down here, the little specific, what's going on in this little pixel. And from when we understand what's going on down here in this little pixel, we'll get a picture of the whole thing. Okay? Talking about the Nefesh or what? Nefesh. Okay? But the Nefesh is divided into also has a male, a masculine, and a feminine. So the feminine, of course, and everything that we're about here, of course, that we always mention is fixing the Malchut. The Malchut is Nukva, the feminine. We're here about fixing the feminine. Yeah. Eve also sinned from, by eating from the tree of knowledge. So why, doesn't, uh, why don't women have to go through uh, Gilgulim? Mm. That is such a good, good question. question. Doesn't know the answer. <laughs> you have a good answer. That's why I said it was a good question. You have an answer. You I see, know. women's tikkun, women's women's tikkun, amazing, is to make sure that they take challah out on Fridays. Mm-hmm. You've heard that before. I have. Have you heard that? Yeah. I don't know why they don't have to go through Gilgulim. They don't have to. You're right. And it seems like they caused the whole problem in the first place, right? I'm going to have to meditate on that one. But I'm going to tell you one thing right now. When a, when a woman does the challah, why is that fixing anything? I mean, it's a mitzvah, great. Because Adam was considered to be the challah of the world. In other words, look at the whole earth. And what did God do? He took a bit of dirt and put man into it. In other words, he pinched like as if the earth was dough, and he put uh, the soul. And she took that pinch, and whatever, you know, she messed it up. So now her rectification is to pinch the dough. It's a cosmic event, you understand. Taking challah out is not just, let's move on. You can, you, it's a meditation of a cosmic event that you are now contributing. When you take that pinch out, you are rectifying mankind. And you're so, bringing a rectification so of me. So if I bake the hala, and, and she just... But she you can do the dough, which was I did for several years. Okay. I made the dough, yeah. and I had her do the pinch. Because she oh. ain't making no hala. Baking, I'm out. Oh. That, that's my wife. For some reason, she never jived with baking. That's okay? It's all good. I had a bread machine. <laughs> I had the bread machine. Did it. I just threw the ingredients in, made the dough, had her do the pinch. Good to go. Okay. Why do you have, we have to do it? I don't know. Fix us, please, with your good counsel. Good advice. God puts into our minds to do certain things. What does it mean by Eitzah Tova? You're waiting for God to give you good advice? He gives you good advice. It pops into your brain. Okay? We learn that from Deuteronomy. In the book of Deuteronomy, one of the biggest fallacies that we come up with Okay, I hate to like veer off the subject a little bit, but one of the biggest fallacies of mankind is to say, Kohiva Otsum Yadiya Sali et Achail Hazeda, which means the strength and work of my hands got me my success. Mm-hmm. That is the biggest mistake of right. all mankind. Mm-hmm. Because why? Because it says right after, 
and it brings down an Aramaic translation. It says, God gave you the blessing. And, it, and the Aramaic says, God, the literal words are, God put the advice in your brain to do X, to do this business or that. God put the idea in your brain for you to, to, to the, invest in this stock or this real estate or do this business endeavor. God put it in. You know, every single morning, every single morning, one of the greatest meditations you could do, right, is when we do the al natila yadayim, the washing of the hands. There's special rituals. A lot of depth right. goes into the washing of the hands, the ritual washing in the morning. You have tomb on your hands. You have to do the defilement. You have to take the water, right, and wash three times, and then you have to lift your hands up. And you make a blessing if you're not in the bathroom or you don't need to. You make a blessing, al natilas yadayim, on the raising of hands. What does it mean? Why al natilas, on the raising? Why that language? Why not on the washing of hands? Right. us. There's other words for ra, for washing. Lifting hands, which means we lift our hands, and we have to lift them up to God, because we have to say, all the work that I'm about to do today so is bad. just totally in your hands, because you know something? All success is yours. you got to really think that and integrate that for a moment. Okay. But you know, in Moses' dictionary, it said in the tilat means washing. Yes, it does. That's the literal English. But the tila literally means just taking. Yeah. That's what it literally means. Taking of hands. You're taking your hands and you're going, all my work is nothing. Because right. you know something? I'm just giving it all over to you. Okay? So, so when, you, when you say God... Uh Tells us to buy a stock and then the stock fails. Does he tell us? That's meant to be. Baruch Hashem. Thank you, God, for taking away my money. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's also Baruch Hashem and meant to be. Yes, that's right. Now, why? Now I'm ready. Fix me, please, with your good advice. I'm ready. That was advice. Maybe, you know, everything is from Hashem. Okay? All right, let's go on a little bit more, okay? Nukva Avasiya, like I said, that's the address, is divided into 613 limbs and sinews. They are classified as 613 major roots. It is impossible to have less, okay? Each one of these roots is never less than 613 sparks, and each one of them is one whole soul. They are called 613 major sparks. It is impossible for any part suf to have less than 613 major roots. It is also impossible that any root will have less than 613 major sparks. you got to do the math here. Get your Google uh, calculator out. Thus, the minimum number of souls that must go through the process of Gilgul to achieve tikkun rectification is 613 times 613 in each and every part suf of the soul body of Adam Arisha. Okay? And the final number is? It's not that. 375,769. Wow, that's a really interesting number. I think that's because I think that's the number of letters in the Torah. If you actually count letters in the Torah, really? if you actually count letters in the Torah, I have to go look at it again, but in that, that might wow. be the number. Because they say really there are 600,000 letters in the Torah. Each one corresponds to one of the root souls that stood in Mount Sinai. Okay? As we know that there were 600,000 souls, root souls in Mount Sinai who, re- who accepted the Torah, who received the Torah. Okay? And each one of those corresponds to a letter in the Torah. They actually did a count and going like, wait a minute, it's only 375,000. Right? So they have answers to that. Mm-hmm. They have answers to the spaces between the letters if you count those. Wow. They have uh, also the 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 um, the nekudot, the vowels. They have different answers how it gets to be 600,000. But the bottom line, it is known from tradition, each one of us hooks up to one of those root souls at Mount Sinai that hooks up that is corresponding one letter in the Torah. Okay? By the way, Moses, when he stood at Mount, you know, before this whole event, you know, he had to ha- have everybody stand in an exact proper <coughs> place. That's right. Like you, Alan, just look four steps over, move back there, one more, that. And you had to move over there, back here, you. You here, nosebleed, you go nosebleed. <laughs> <laughs> nosebleed with Cohen. 
here, take this. Okay, right back, back. <laughs> you know? So in any case, everybody had to stand in the exact place because when the transmission came, it had to hit every single place in the right place for it to be received in the right way. Everybody has a portion in Torah, and that's what this is really about. Okay, it's about hooking up with the, your portion in the Torah, your transmission, hooking up with your special frequency soul frequency that you have to transmit, okay? The idea here is we have 375,000. Uh, Give me that number again, please. 375,769. Uh, 375,769. Three, seven, 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 of Adam and they fragment into greater numbers of particulars. The 613 major roots may fragment into as many as 600,000 minor roots. They cannot be more than that, but less than that is possible. Because you don't understand, if there's 600,000 root souls, how many Jews are there in the world? It's about 16 million, I think, now. 15 or 16 million, right? Mm -hmm. So all of the 15 and 16 that exist all somehow go or into those 600,000 root mm -hmm. souls. Okay, it doesn't divide any more than that. Okay? So the reason why you need these sparks is because each one has to do their tikkun. Everybody's got to do their tikkun. Okay? Now this is for you personally. Okay? In other words, with, if, when stuff happens, you know, you know, well, how come they get to buy a big house and we don't get to buy a big house? Or how come they get this and they, we don't get that? And the questions come up. That's their tikkun. I have my tikkun. And if people come and ask you about, and they start to go into their, their tsuris. Do everybody know what the word tsuris is? Mm -hmm. Sure. Tsuris is, how do you translate tsuris? Trouble. 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 Trouble, aggravations. They're troubles. Yeah, troubles. Everybody has a peck of them. Heckle in Yiddish means a little, a little bit. bag of right. stuff. Okay? Dirty laundry. Oh, that's not yeah. a really good one. No. No, it's a peckle. A yeah. peckle is a little You're couch. You're right. What? You're right. 15 million Jews. Thank you. So, I, so um, oh, now I forgot where I was. Oh. Peckle. Peckle. Gosh. Sure. Aggravation. Everybody's got their trouble. Ah, thank you. So if everybody comes to you with their little package of aggravation, their little things, their troubles, and there are real troubles, and we have to empathize with them. Never say, this is your tikkun, man. Okay? <laughs> okay, it just doesn't, doesn't, you know, if they're not ready to take it. Now, me, I'm ready. And I was talking to Rabbi Wolby about something. He says, this is your tikkun, man. Now, I'm on the level, I'm not, good. I'm good, thank you. Thank you. Okay? <laughs> Sometimes, not all the time, okay? He says, this is your tikkun, it was his tikkun, and it was his tikkun, and it's your tikkun. And when you, you know, if you're, if you, it's good, but you have to be careful, don't tell, go around telling people, you know, the reason why this happens is because you're tikkun, man. Okay? Are you going to get hit? Yes, exactly. Okay? Right? So then, don't, okay? For, it's for us and ourselves, when things, we can accept it easier, and it's about being, have emuna. Everything about Torah is about de deepening our emuna, and we understand tikkun, tikkun. In other words, when you can't explain why X happens, right, you just say, it's my tikkun, okay? It is also not necessary that every major root, I'm on page 145, every major root divide into the same number like each other. This is because everything depends upon the blemish. Okay, in other words, the blemish of Adam or Rishon caused all of these sparks to have to happen, caused us to exist, because each of us has to achieve a rectification in some area, okay? The larger the defect that m strikes the major root, the greater will be the number of minor roots that it divides into. This is another, an interesting thing. In other words, if, like, say, sometime, somewhere in time, you hook up to one of those major roots that was on Mount Sinai, all our souls were Mount Sinai. All of us were in that root. Let's say that root messed up big time. Thanks a lot, buddy. Okay? You know, they have a great story. There was two, two big Hasidic masters, brothers, close brothers, Rabbi Eli Melech and Rabbi Zusha. And they were walking. And Rabbi Eli Melech was saying, Man, 
<laughs> if I was there with Adam in the Garden of Eden, I would have told him, don't do it, man. Just don't do it. Right? Right? And Razusha says, I was there. And I was telling him to do it. <laughs> Excuse me. I was there and I was telling him to do it. <laughs> okay? We were all there. Okay, we were all in the 613 roots. And maybe you were the one telling him, do it. Do it. Okay? <laughs> do it. Okay? So when he messes up big time, the root, what happens, what it's saying is, there's going to be more divisions, okay? The bigger the, the... I don't know how to put this in clean terms, but if you create a mountain of dung, yeah. you got to move that mountain. So you need a lot... If it's a bigger the mountain, you get a bigger move, yeah. you need more help to move that mountain, so you got to break that mountain into smaller chunks in order to move that mountain, Okay? So the bigger the mountain, the bigger the, 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 the smaller, the more fragments you're going to need to go ahead and fix that mountain up, okay? There are some major roots that divide into a thousand, a thousand minor roots and some into a hundred. However, all the 613 major roots together cannot divide into more than 600,000 minor roots. There is a maximum number of 600,000 minor roots that are grouped in various in sets of various sizes. Each of these sets is called a major root, and there are 630 major roots. This is all very confusing, but when we get to the charts, it'll become more easier, okay? It is the same way with each of the 613 sparks in each and every one of the 613 major roots. <sighs> each spark divides into a number of sparks, and there are major sparks that divide into a thousand minor sparks, and there are those that divide into a hundred and so on. However, all the 613 major sparks in their entirety do not divide into more than 600,000 minor sparks. Okay, here's this chart here. It's going to help us, okay? There are 600,000 minor sparks. This little box here helps us, I think, the most. You see, see in the box, there are 613 major roots. Very nice, okay? And each of those major roots, as we see, goes the arrow down, will divide up into 613 major sparks. And each of those, if you go to the arrow there, break down to 600,000 minor sparks, okay? You have, so this, this chart helps us a lot, just in understanding how much things could be divided and subdivided, okay? So here, let's look in the note here. There are 600,000 minor sparks, and they are also grouped in sets of various sizes. Each one of these sets is called a major spark. And there are 613 major sparks in each one of the 613 major roots. He didn't do that, okay? Each of the 613 major roots contains 613 major sparks, okay? But these major sparks, as we've seen, fragment into as many as 600,000 minor sparks. Thus, the maximum number of sparks in each and every part suit is 613 times 600,000. Someone do the math. I think we did the math. 613 times 600,000 is the original number that we said in the very beginning. What was the original number we said in chapter 10? Mm, 3 million. No, it's, it's, here it is. 367.8 million. So I don't understand how if we have 15 million Jews, how we ended up with 367.8 million. Do right? 613 times what? 600. I don't think that's right. No? What you just said. 613 times 600,000 is what? Well, 6 times 13 is 98. So that'd be 3698. What number did you have? 367.8. No, right. 367.8? No, we have to do the math. Do the math. Three hundred and sixty-seven. What do we got? Three hundred sixty-seven thousand eight. No, three. Million. No, three hundred sixty-seven million eight hundred thousand. There you go. There you go. So the question. So the question on the floor is: If we're fifteen, there's three hundred and sixty-seven point eight million possibilities of sparks that need to be rectified. Okay, I think it's a good sign. If there's 15 million Jews in the world, okay? 367. So we don't need to get 367 million Jews to make, make the final tikkun. Don't freak out. But it's 600,000 times 613. It could be thus also in different generations. 613. Howard. 613 times 600,000. Can you plug in your thing? I'll do it. 
second. It's all good. It's all good. Here, plug it in. Still good. No, We're going. I'm sorry. It's all good. No, it's fine. It's fully joined. Good, good, good. No, no, it just went off for a second. Okay, good. All right, so we're, okay. That's the number. Okay, dynamics of the soul spark divisions. This section is based on the previous one, but the Rav will add two new aspects, the model of dynamic development and an explanation in detail of how it works. We'll find out. In addition, he will change some of the terminology that was introduced in the previous section. First of all, okay, in the previous section, we've learned that the 613 major roots become a fragmentation as a result of sin and blemish. Okay, so that we already understood. Okay, first it started as, off as one universal soul of Adam. Okay, and he had body parts, head, arm, torso, legs, right? And because of the sin, of course, now what happens is we got to fix the whole thing up. And the way to fix the whole thing up is you got to break it up into pieces. The muscle is, the parable that they give is, God wants you to move a mountain. It's a mountain. How are you going to move a mountain? I can't lift a mountain. You break it up. you got to break it up into pieces. If you break up the pieces, so then you can move the mountain. So the way that we're going to move the mountain is we have to break it up. It has to get broken up. Okay? So that's why we get into major roots, minor roots, sub-minor roots. Okay? The 600,000 minor roots are, are not subdivisions of the 613 major roots, even though I thought they were. Rather, the 613 are divided into smaller units. I thought that means a subdivision. Yeah. 600,000, I don't get it. 600,000 is the maximum number that may be reached. That is what we mean when we say that the 613 major roots become or fragment into 600,000 minor roots. The symbol we will use for this phenomenon is that's the arrow. I'm not sure I understand this because if he says that it doesn't divide, it's not a subdivision, then what is it? Okay? I'm not clear on that. It says in this case we mean subdivision. Okay. So that's what, and then, then that's what, how we're going to look at it. We're going to grasp it however we can. Okay? Each one of the 613 major roots divides into 613 major sparks, as we discussed. In this case, we mean subdivision. Okay? We'll go with that. Okay? The best way to do it is to skip down to 146. Here we go. Okay? He sees uh, 146 there, the pyramid there on the bottom. That's the easiest way to describe how this is working. The pyramid here, you know, I'll show it to you here. If you see it here in your good eyes, how are your eyes, David? Okay? It starts off as a one here at the top. The one here at the top is the soul of Adam. Okay? Adam, of course, sinned, and then it became incumbent upon mankind to fix that blemish. Really, interestingly enough, he blemished his you know, soul, his ruach, his nefesh, his ruach, and his nisham, his level one, two, and three. Okay? And then, of course, what happened? The generations after Adam messed up, right? Mm -hmm. We have the generation of the Enoch, Right? Which started idolatry, as the Rambam brings down. In other words, the idolatry started off with, we know there's a God, we know there's a universal force, but then there's the stars and the planets, and they're working for God, but if we could do special favors to the stars and the planets, so then they'll do special favors with us on the side under the table. That's called idolatry. Okay? And then we have the generation of the flood, and then you have the generation of the Tower of Babel. Basically, mankind messed up and was not fixing the situation. Came Ab Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, and they fixed the three levels of the soul of Adam Harishon, of the first man. That's why it's three under here. Okay? Abraham fixed, I'm going to try to do this from my memory, but I really need to go into the, the Baal Shem Tov gave an explanation. Abraham fixed idolatry, okay, because he was against idolatry. I think Yitzchak fixed, um, he fixed, uh, because in the sin of man, you have to understand, in the sin of man, there's a lot of deep things that goes, that goes into the sin of Adam Harisho in terms of what he blemished. Okay, it wasn't just simply eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He blemished three relationships. 
three relationships. Relationship to self, relationship to other, and relationship to God. And how about what his son did? Well, they just messed up. <laughs> okay. Murder? Yeah. Okay. Let's just work, focus on that one sin in the Garden of Eden and how it messed up the three relationships that we have today. Right? Relationship to self, relationship to other, relationship to God. Those three relationships, the blemish of those relationships were reflected in three different sins that was really all included in the one sin of eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The one sin of eating the tree of knowledge had, had three major sins in it, which were idolatry, to believe in something else other than God. Murder. In other words, I can murder because they killed themselves, they died as a result. And promiscuity. Promiscuity, which means like um, uh, adultery. Because it was going after something else or going after God's will. Each of those three sins bl are blemish those three relationships. Idolatry, of course, blemishes the relationship between you and God. Murder, obviously, blemishes the relationship between you and man. And uh, adultery, actually, believe it or not, is, is, de is the relationship to yourself. You're damaging yourself. They say, this is wild, the, the Gomorrah gives the imagery of uh, adultery is scratching a scab. Yep. Why scratching a scab is the inner root quality of adultery because like it itches scratch it it feels good it's going to bleed it's not going to get better you know and 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 and, and you, so you're only hurting yourself right you have to like you have to deal with the itch <laughs> okay it's going to itch but if you scratch it you know you're just going to it's going to bleed again so you're really you're damaging yourself okay so, you know, even though it could be relationships with uh, somebody outside of the, the, what's permissible, it's still the damages to yourself. So, so it affects those three relationships. Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov came and fixed those three relationships. What did, what did Isaac fix? Okay, Yitzhak fixed. I believe he fixed adultery. He only married one woman. And they say Yaakov Avino fixed murder because until he lived with his wife... He did not have not one seminal emission. He got married at 84. Mm. Nice ripe old age, right? Right. He got married to, uh, at 84 with Leah, and that was the first seminal emission because they uh, they claim that basically they claim he was Came a robust. Are you kidding me? He was like a young buck at 84, man. The guy was yeah. moving rocks and and kicking sheep. Okay, so. <laughs> And he was the head coach of the Yankees. So, and, okay. So, I don't know where that came from. Something. Sorry. <laughs> and he punji jumped and coached the uh, 34 Olympics. Right? And he, and, and, and. Okay, stop. I'm going to lose my train of thought here, okay? Stop. So, one second. Shh. So Yaakov Avinu, they say if a person has a seminal omission, of course, that's tantamount to in a higher level, in a certain scale, in spiritual terms, as murder. Because the seed, to spill right. seed in vain, is like murder. Okay? So therefore, it's considered that he fixed those. Okay? Um, so those for all those three picked up. Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov fixed the nefesh, ruach, and neshama of Adam Marishon. Okay? I think Abraham was the nefesh, uh, yeah, uh, Yitzhak was the Ruach, the Spirit, number three, category number two, and Yaakov Avinu fixed number three, the Neshama of Adam Harishon. Okay? So therefore, they became the, the, the trunk of the tree, so to speak, if you look at it as a trunk of a tree. Okay? So therefore, they became the trunk of the tree of the soul of Adam Harishon. Now, Yaakov Avinu had 12 tribes, 12 sons, and they were all whole. Not one of them had a blemish. Not like Avram. Avram had a kid who was not with the program. Right? He had Ishmael who was not with the program. And Yitzhak had a son who was also not with the program. He was Asaph, Esau. Right? He wasn't with the program. But all but Yaakovin had twelve. Those twelve were now, as the tree branches out into twelve uh, what do you call it, major branches. Okay? And of course those twelve 
came into being the 70 that went down to Egypt. There were 70 souls that went to Egypt. So now the roots are now furthermore projected out. And those roots became, of course, the 600,000 people that came out of Egypt. And those became the 600,000 root souls, and it doesn't break down any more than that, except for the sparks is what we're discussing today. Okay? So if you go to page 148, you have a great picture there. Okay? And you'll see it right there. And this top uh, chart right here, 613 major roots, or one part Suf, Adam Arishon, that goes into the patriarchs, that goes into the tribes, that goes into the 70 souls, that goes into the 600,000 major sparks. Okay? So you have major roots that goes into 600,000 major sparks. Okay? And now you'll have something really bizarre here that's going to take you on another place, and then we're going to end it right here. Is if you go to this, like here, chart down here, 613 minor roots, okay? And, or we'll call it one part, so you have a whole set, and that's Cain, the left shoulder of Cain, okay? Mm-hmm. What is going on? Okay, we, we love to do left turns just to mm-hmm. freak you out, okay? Yeah. What? Once again, Adam Arishon, body parts. He has a head, he has shoulders, right? Cain and Abel were also kind of, we called them semi-new souls, and they also had body parts, okay? So one of us hook up to Cain, who doesn't hook up with Cain anymore, right? Who is not a descendant of Cain? Who is not a soul root of Cain these days, okay? Hevel is a different category altogether, okay? But let's say this is just the left shoulder, of Cain, and that also breaks down into all of these other things, okay? So in other words, you can have the three patriarchs being expressed through the, just the left shoulder of Cain, the 12 tribes, the 70 souls, and the 600,000 minor sparks that also hook out through there. And then it gets into even the other, the next chart you'll see there, the heel of the left leg, okay? It breaks down. It breaks down. We all break down into one pixel of the body part. Hod. Hod. Is the left leg, yes. Not the heel, though, necessarily, maybe. Okay? In other words, if you look at page 50, you'll just, just the top of that diagram, which says heel of the left leg. Thank you very much. Okay? In other words, it breaks down into sub parts. Okay? In other words, all of us are rooted in some place in this soul, in the bigger soul. Okay? I would like to say, and I would feel so safe to say, that we're all part of the heel. We're in the heel of existence right now. We call it the heel of, we call it the ikvisa de Mashiach, which is the heel of the Messiah, the footsteps, they call it, of the Messiah. In other words, if you look at all of history, a lot of times they will look at history as being also in the form of a bodily form. A head with shoulders, arms, torso, and legs. Okay? And like the, if you recall Daniel, the dream of Daniel, where the king had a dream, and he asked Daniel for what is the dream and the interpretation. It was a golden head and a silver shoulders, and it was, um, what was it, a bronze body and iron legs, and then the feet were a mixture of clay and iron. Okay? And Daniel basically told, this is the existence of all of the kingdoms that exist for all of history that the gold represented the Babylon Empire, and the silver represented the, uh, after the Persians, and then the, the Greeks were bronze, and the iron was Rome. And the leg mixture of clay is the kind of like the blending of, I, of Ishmael with uh, Rome, okay? The kind of enmeshment with, that they have, right? So, that, and that's, so therefore it's all existence. It's like one body form, okay? So like the earlier generations were the head. The head had all the senses, like our heads have senses, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, right? We can see, we can hear, right? And as history moved forward, right, and then again it went from the shoulders to the torso, right? The torso doesn't have any senses except for the heart, and the heart feels and the heart has intuition, right? And then as history goes further, and when 57, 79, right now, right, that we're in the heel of existence, the last part. And the heel, it doesn't have any eyes, 
the heel doesn't have any mouth. The heel doesn't even have a heart for intuition. What does the heel have? You got it. Only one sense. Emuna. That's the only sense. That's the sense that you have to develop. So Luke Skywalker has to turn off the computer and he has to use the force and he has to have Emuna and go forward in this darkness that we're in. So all of us hook up to roots. One of the 613 that break up to 613 that break up to 613 that's part of the, the 15 million that we are all on. We all have our own little individual tikkun. Most of us are associated with most likely, I would say, the heel of existence. And our task these days, and it's so readily available, thank God, that everybody that's coming out is the idea of imuna. You have to have imuna. We're in very dark times. There's a lot of suffering in the world. Right, and if you and and, you, and and we don't see necessarily the face of God in our lives. We do a lot of times. You have to thank God for everything. But the idea here is the thing to work on is emuna. Okay, that's the sense that we get, the greatest thing that we can establish and develop within ourselves. Emuna and the sakanenu be'etzatova milafanech Hashem. Please fix us with your good etzah. He puts the advice in our heads. Okay. For a tikkun. We want to achieve tikkun. And then when we achieve our little tikkun on our little corner and our little left heel of existence, the whole thing becomes fixed. Okay? We're contributing majorly in our little corner of the galaxy. Don't think it's nothing. Okay? We'll stop here. Any questions? Millions. Go for it. <laughs> I, I don't, still don't know what the difference between major sparks 